Hello, my name is Steve and I built a homemade, fully functional submarine. <laughs> Where did I get the idea to build a submarine? Um, well, in uh, 2016, I came across a featurette on the Science Channel of a guy that I ended up connecting with named Andy Seymour. Uh, he and others built a submarine out of a propane tank. Uh, very cool story, I'll have to put the link in the video. Anyway, uh, I share the same kind of drive and interest in engineering. Uh, plus, being in the business of watercraft, it inspired me greatly. Another inspiration uh, was a guy named Paul. I'll leave his last name out of it in case he doesn't want me to mention it. But uh, when I had this idea, I began scrolling the internet, uh, researching the technical systems behind submersibles and how they function. Uh, I was looking for design inspiration. And I came across this sub called the Marlin 32 that was for sale at the time. Uh, its real name isn't the Marlin 32 though. Because uh, after enough digging, I found the designer, Paul. Uh, the sub's original name was S101. Uh, I saw it, and I fell in love with the aesthetic. Uh, as a kid, Navy submarines always inspired me. Uh, and after talking with Paul, he gave me a lot of helpful tips. I met with a variety of submarine designers in the community, uh, in a community called uh, P-Subs. Uh, which is a very niche, small group of the world's best and most knowledgeable designers of personal submersibles. Uh, once I built all the knowledge, uh, it was time to design my own submarine. About me, I own a boat rental company in upstate New York. I also own a retail store and a custom pontoon boat manufacturer. So yeah, I keep myself pretty busy. Um, Every day is something new. Uh, it's exciting, and uh, you know, if I can stay busy and stay happy, that's all that matters. Uh, boat manufacturer, yes. So uh, that was part of why I also built the submarine. Uh, having a registered boat manufacturer behind it allowed me to make all the necessary steps to make sure it was compliant and worthy of testing on the water. Uh, most of what we do is build pontoon boats and rent pontoons. So the submarine being a first of its kind, uh, with the entrepreneur in me, I also saw this as an opportunity for the sub to be a demonstration model. So how did I build it? Um, well, uh, submarines are an entirely different breed from boat building. Uh, although I ended up building the sub as a demonstration model for my business, it was entirely home built, outside, not in the garage, for four years. Uh, nearly 4,000 hours through the cold winter nights, over 95% of it all by myself. Um, I started by creating my own drawings, uh, figuring out the placement of the ballast tanks, weight distribution, displacement, how I could power it. I ended up taking all of this and building a tiny scale model of the submarine that I tested in the water and it worked fantastic. So that was the starting point. Uh, then the building really began. Uh, most of the challenging parts to build uh, were the conning towers, the hatch rings, and the viewports. I have some clips that I'm going to show. The conning towers, which are the vertical towers you can sit up in, to cut those, I projected a circle onto the sides of it. So when it was cut, it would fit the hole perfectly because you can't have a wide gap when welding them together. Uh, so there's very little room for error. Um, that part took a little bit of out-of-the-box thinking because these are giant steel tubes um, that are several hundred pounds. I mean, it's quarter-inch thick steel, so everything has to line up perfectly, and that was a challenge. The hatch rings I had to do twice. That was a $2,000 loss on the first try. Uh, the, the problem with the hatch rings, which to explain for people that don't know, uh, the hatch ring is where the hatch door seals, keeping water pressure from the outside out. Well, when welding the first set of hatch rings, there were very small gaps between the rings and the steel tube of the conning tower. The weld slightly shrunk, warping the, ring, warping the rings just enough that the O-rings couldn't fully seal. So I had to go back, double check the thickness of the hatch rings, send them out to a machine shop, Again, 
to be cut for the O-rings and do it all over. But that time ended up fitting perfectly. The viewports are not traditional. Uh, almost every sub has round viewports, uh, and that's because it's the standard for di diving deep depths. Uh, whereas my sub, they are square and curved, as it was only designed to go 60 feet underwater. I actually had an engineering company run simulated pressure tests on the hull design and viewports, and it checked out for 160 feet as an estimated crust depth. The viewports for over 300. But because they weren't traditional, I went very overkill on the thickness. They're one and a half inch thick, thermoformed acrylic, which I thermoformed myself. And thermoforming is the process of reshaping the acrylic sheets in order to get them to sit flush on the conning towers. Uh, I had to make them curve. So I baked the viewports very carefully and consulted a company that specialized in thermoforming viewports for submarines, and it ended up working out perfect. How does the sub work in the water? So it is fully electric. It has three thrusters. It weighs 6,000 pounds, so its top speed is about four miles an hour. Uh, but that gets the job done for moving around small lakes. It's uh, equipped with a CO2 scrubber, which removes the carbon dioxide you exhale, and onboard air and oxygen to replenish the O2 levels and maintain cabin pressure. How long can I stay underwater? I built it to have a life support for over 24 hours. Even though it's a shallow diving sub, in the rare event of an emergency, it's not deep enough that you can't swim out of it with scuba. So you can also flood it and swim out pretty easily. So it's actually very safe. Uh, it's also designed to be accessible from rescue divers on the outside that could add air to the ballast system with their scuba tanks. So all those features make it pretty redundant. Is there a reason I design it to be shallow diving if you can scuba the same depth? Yes, uh, mostly for the experience of being underwater for longer periods of time without max bottom times or decompression stops, which is what scuba divers have to do. Another big part of it was not for practical research or uh, recovery use, but for pleasure use. The cool factor. Uh, the look of it. It has that Navy sub look, unlike a traditional yellow sub. So building something different was really important. How much did it cost? Because I built it myself, the parts were about 26000 but it was worth every minute. Uh, to build this with a team would have cost more than three times that. The coolest thing about having a personal submarine is the amount of people that love to look at it and see it work in the water. For sure. Uh, it's more fulfilling to share the love about how submarines work with people than anything. Um, even the police loved it. So, story time. Uh, first time we took it out on the water for a surface trial, someone called the police. Of course, they said that they thought we were being attacked by North Korea. <laughs> Mind you, this is a small lake not connected to the ocean. Uh, anyway, the police boat comes over and they thought it was the coolest thing ever. Uh, ended up giving a personal tour to almost all the sheriffs. Uh, they, they all got a personal tour inside it. Um, uh, so now they know me as the submarine guy every time we're out on the water and the uh, boat went along. <laughs> what stage of testing am I in now? So we completed our first dive trial. It took five trials in total, three surface, one partial dive, and one fully submerged. I'll share some of the footage of the surface trials. The main focus of the surface trials is to fine tune the stability of the sub on the surface, uh, fix any issues that cause excessive tilting or trim issues. Uh, it took three surface trials because it has a tendency to tilt. So I added stability. Once that was fixed, I was ready for the next step. The dive trials were the most exciting. Uh, this is when you get to test everything and see it function after 4,000 hours of work. Before I got to dive it fully, it was really important to see how it would react as it began to submerge. So during the partial dive, I noticed it was front heavy. As it settled lower into the water, the more the nose would drop. So I had to diagnose if the weight was unbalanced or if air was getting trapped inside the F-ballast tank. Every time you do a trial, you usually end up with more questions to solve. So after that, I ended up figuring out it was a weight balance issue. Once I corrected that, is ready to fully submerge, which is this video.
you have it. That is the first day we fully submerged it. Trial number five, mission success. About five years in the making. I'm gonna take off the hatch fence. We're gonna take a look inside. Grab these two right here. There is SS1, completely dry. That is ignition success. We'll turn the lights off. Pause the GoPro. We've got the GoPro here. Yep, I couldn't ask for a better result. That was fantastic. So what's next for the submarine? We're going to dive it deeper, which is why I suggest you like and subscribe because you're going to see that, and I'll do some more Q&A. Anyway, other things for planes, boats, and submarines, I'm going to start posting videos of some outside-the-box home projects that a lot of people don't do. So, like and subscribe. Thank you very much.